like this and a challenge like this, I'm probably going to locate the origin right here. You know what? Now that I'm thinking about this, this model actually is on the Practice Models app. So I think I'm just going to do this right in the Practice Models app. So while you guys are working on this challenge here, let's get into a live solve using Onshape. And we are going to live solve this hex wheel. But let's bring up our Too Tall Toby app here, tooltalltoby.com. We're going to click here to get started with free practice models and you can see here that what we can do is we can go into show filters and we can say filter by free and that way we can see that we've got about 20 challenges here that are free for all users anyone with a free too tall toby account can do one of these challenges and i'm going to do this challenge here looks like i actually already did it in the past 24-08-09 hex wheel so it looks like when i did this the first time i was able to come up with a time of three minutes and 40 seconds let's see if i can beat that time today it's gonna be a speed run now i'm gonna do this one as a tutorial so i'm probably gonna be a little bit slower this time but let's see if we can come up with an answer to this question of what is the mass of this part so i'm gonna click here to get started or click here to try again and i'm gonna choose reveal drawing now the clock is running and the question is, what is the mass of this part in 0.xxx pounds? And I'm going to answer that question down here in this block. But I think what I'm going to do before I get started is just take a minute or two and come up with a game plan. I think that's always a good idea when you're trying to come up with a solution for one of these challenges. And so we can see here that this part has got a round circle on the outside, an inner circle for the wall thickness, a round circle in the middle, another a hex in the very middle. And then it's also got this kind of dotted circle here representing the location of these arcs. So you've got this arc here, whoops, you've got this arc here, and you've got this arc here, which are coming down to this point, which is on this four inch circle. So that's gonna be you know, definitely part of my game plan as well. But I think the first step in any, any game plan, whenever you're trying to come up with a, a result, a 3D model from a 2D drawing, is to decide where the origin is gonna be. And I think in the case of this part, I'm gonna put the origin right here, dead center of the model, and also right here. Now, the reason I'm putting it right here on this side is because the model has this note, CLSYM, which means that the model is symmetric. So that means that once I create my first sketch, I'm gonna be able to start extruding some of that geometry. So now I've decided where the origin is going to be. Let's now talk about what that first sketch is going to look like. And for the sketch plane, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the sketch plane here, running right down the middle, right along that line of symmetry. And then for the sketch itself, what I'm going to do is sketch this outside circle. I'm going to sketch this inside circle. I'm going to sketch this circle here as a construction line. I'm going to sketch this circle here in the middle. And then I'm going to sketch this hex shape. And that way I've kind of got all my key information for the perimeter of this model in that first sketch. And then I can start extruding using symmetry so that everything extrudes out from the center of the model. And then once I've got that geometry in place, I can start tackling this spoke. And this is going to be a question that you're often going to run into when you have fillets, particularly when you have kind of complicated fillets. The question is going to be, should I create a sketch that includes those fillets or should I omit those fillets from the sketch? and include those fillets in the feature. And I think the answer for a model like this and for most models is keep the sketch as simple as possible. So for me, my sketch is just gonna have the arcs and then add the fillets secondarily as a feature. And I, I just think that generally speaking, that's a good strategy. Save your fillets for the feature level and create your sketch, which is nice sharp corners, and then fillet that off at the feature level. You're gonna be much better off. So my game plan is gonna be to create this spoke right here. I'm just going to, you know, create that one because that's where these dimensions are being called out from. And then once I've got that spoke and those fillets, I'm going to create a feature pattern to pattern that around to four instances equally spaced. So I know we took a little bit of time off the clock just to kind of come up with that game plan. But remember, this is going to go faster and faster the more you practice it. The game plan is going to come very naturally. But when you first get started in the world of 3D CAD, it's always good to kind of come up with a game plan and then get into the actual 3D modeling. Aaron C in the chat says, I agree. Putting fillets on is their own feature most of the time. Yeah, I think so too. So I'm going to move this over to my second screen. Here we are in on shape. Let's bring up our keyboard cam so you guys can see all the, the keyboard shortcuts I'm using. I'm going to choose create document and I'm going to call this thing 24-08-09 hex wheel. This is going to be stored in the public repository on Onshape. It's a public document. So if anybody ever wants to see what I'm doing uh, with this document, you can just look it up in the public space. So I'm going to say create document, create public document. 
And then the very first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to go up to this hamburger menu. And in this hamburger menu here, I'm going to choose to adjust my workspace units. So workspace units, inch and pound. And that way, when I go to answer this question, I can answer it correctly. And when I go to model the question, I can model it correctly. Make sure you set your units correctly before you get started. So now here, front plane, S key, begin a sketch, N key to get normal to, S key to begin a circle, single click the origin, move my mouse, single click again, let go of my mouse, and then type in that diameter, seven, enter. Single click, move my mouse, single click again, let go of my mouse, type in that diameter, six. Single click, move my mouse, single click again, let go of my mouse, type in the diameter four. Single click, move my mouse, single click again, let go of my mouse, type in that diameter, 1.5. And then I'm gonna use this tool here, the inscribe polygon tool. Inscribe polygon, I'm gonna single click here on the origin, move my mouse, single click again. Now I can roll my mouse here, or I'm sorry, I can move my mouse here, uh, left and right, to change the number of sides six single click then i'm going to let go of my mouse and then i'm going to type in the hex distance there which is 0 0.75 enter and then i'm just going to hit escape so nothing is selected and you'll notice here that this hex can still kind of rotate around the origin so i'm going to single click this lower line and then i'm going to press h on my keyboard h and that's going to make that lower line horizontal and that gives me that hex with that 0 0.75 Final thing I'm going to do with the sketch, I don't really need to do this, but I am going to do it just because I think it looks good. I'm going to click on this arc here and I'm going to press Q on my keyboard, Q. And you see that what that does is it changes that arc to be a construction line. And that's going to help me because I'm going to be using that as part of my layout strategy. So now I'm ready to start turning this thing into extruded geometry, S key, extrude. Now I've done a right mouse button customize on this uh, S key menu to make it a little more efficient for my most common workflows. So S key, extrude, and then I'm going to uh, press the space bar. And what the space bar does is it clears all of my current selections. So that's just kind of a habit that I'm in when I've got a lot of uh, multiple nested contours. So I just press the space bar and then I can click here to extrude this region. And then the depth of that region is gonna be 1.5, enter. And then I'm gonna press tab, 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 and then symmetric. And then I'm gonna press the space bar to activate that symmetric option so it extrudes out mid-plane. So now that we've got that geometry in place, I'm gonna press enter, and then I'm gonna go over to the tree here and I'm gonna choose to show that sketch one so that I can use it again for a subsequent extrusion. So show sketch one, now I'm gonna choose extrude. I'm gonna come down here and click inside of this region. So now that's the region that's getting extruded. I'm gonna click up here for depth. I'm gonna type in two, tab, 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 space bar, enter and that gives me that extrusion as well so now i've got like the rib and i've got the hub got those two features in place so now i'm ready to create the spoke so i'm going to go front plane s key begin a sketch n key to get normal to and then i'm going to do s key to come up with an arc here so i'm going to create an arc that goes from this edge to this edge and that arc is going to have a radius of 1.5 and then I'm gonna create an arc that goes from this edge to this edge, and that arc is gonna have a radius of 2.0. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, hit escape so nothing is selected. I'm gonna take this point and this point and press I. That makes those two points coincident to one another. I'm gonna take this arc here and this point, and I'm gonna press I. That makes that those center points coincident to that arc. And then finally, I'm going to take this point here, the origin, and this point, and I'm going to press H, and that's going to make those points horizontal to that arc. So that information is all called out here in the drawing. The center points are right on top of one another, and the center points are also on this uh, diameter four, and the center points are also on the cross-section line, or the, the center, center mark for the center of the entire wheel. So that's how you know to, to locate that point the way I just located it. So now, now that you can see that this sketch is nice and black, everything is fully constrained. Now at this point, what you could do is you could press the S key and go into extrude and see if you can pick up on that region. But you notice that it's not highlighting because that region is not um, uh, fully enclosed. And so what I could do here, I'm just gonna hit the cancel for the extrude. I'm gonna double click here on the uh, sketch two. And I'm just gonna take this line from the earlier sketch and I'm gonna say, use 
project slash convert. And then I'm going to take this line from the earlier sketch. Or I, it's an arc, not a line. This arc from the earlier sketch, use project slash convert. And then I'm going to press S key extrude. And now what you'll see is if I press the space bar and then I click in here, now I can pick that region. So I couldn't get it before because it wasn't properly enclosed, but now it is. So now we are good to go. So I'm going to choose to bring that out to a depth of one inch. Tab, 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 symmetric. Hit the space bar there. And then this one, instead of this being a new part, instead of adding a new part down here in the tree, like um, hub, rim, spoke, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose to add, add. So this is a, we're doing a solid extrusion here. We're choosing to add, and then we're gonna choose to merge with all. So it'll automatically merge to those other bodies. So merge with all, and we hit the green check mark, and oh yeah, that is looking good. So I think we're done with this layout sketch now. We can hide this layout sketch. Probably done with the planes also, so we could press P to hide those planes. And now we're ready to start adding in those fillets. And so the fillets are a little bit tricky. You just gotta kind of pay attention to which one is the larger fillet. So the larger fillet is on this kind of uh, inner portion of the curve. So S key, fillet, tab, 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 and 0 0.75 click on this edge here and now I know I'm going to add another fillet with a different radius so I'm going to hold shift and then I'm going to press enter shift enter and what that does is it adds the fillet but then it takes me back into another fillet command so now I can do tab 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 I can call this one uh, 0.25 I can pick this edge here and then I can press sometimes I click over here in the in the number box again then I can press um, enter or I'm sorry shift enter let me try that again. Then I can press shift enter, and then that takes me back into the fillet command again. And so for this one, this one is gonna be um, this edge here and this edge here, and those guys are gonna have a radius of 0 0.5. Enter and enter, and now I'm done with that fillet command. So shift enter is a good shortcut in on shape to repeat the previous command. And so now to finish this thing off, what I can do is fly out this menu here, go to circular pattern. And you want to remember that up top here, you can choose this fly out menu and then you can choose feature pattern, feature pattern. So it's going to be a feature pattern of the spoke, which is this extrude, the, the spoke fillet one, spoke fillet two and spoke fillet three. And then the axis of the pattern is just going to be this circular edge here. And look at that. It's already looking good. Four instances is the default and four instances looks good for this thing. So I'm gonna hit the green check mark here and now I'm gonna go down here to the name of the part, right mouse button and say, edit appearance. Maybe make this part look a little bit more like what the customer gave us. The customers always like it when you do that with their parts. And then I'm gonna right mouse button on this part and say, assign material. And that material is gonna come from the TTT custom materials library. And that material is gonna be ABS. And so we hit the check mark. And now finally down here in the corner, we can choose this little uh, set of scales and then we can click on the part anywhere. And that will give us the mass of the part 0 0.867 pounds. So now back here in the Too Tall Toby practice model app, I'm gonna type in 0 0.867 and enter. And oh yeah, we did it, we got it correct. And that is the correct answer. And so you can see here, it says, congratulations, this answer is correct, but you already knew that as you have completed this practice models before. And then upon submission, your previously submitted time of three minutes, 40 seconds uh, will be replaced by this 12 minutes and seven seconds. That's fine. I like this one anyway, because this one has the tutorial associated with it. So I'm gonna say submit and okay. And now we see that my time for this model is 12 minutes and seven seconds, still, still faster than the average time. So that's usually what my standard is. If I go longer than the average time, I try to, I use the try again function. And then I try to get this time here under that time. And then we can see Will, wow, 41 seconds. Let's go. That's pretty darn fast. And, uh, and then, you know, again, soon we're going to be able to see a video of Will doing that in 41 seconds. That'll be awesome. I can't wait to see those speed run videos. So if you enjoyed that tutorial, be sure to hit the like button on this video. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Uh, let me know if you have any questions about that tutorial down in the comments below. And that is our on-screen.